Hello, welcome to another episode of Expat Corner. Well, since the normalization of relationship between Vietnam and Korea in 1992, more and more Koreans have chosen to come to Vietnam for traveling, for working, or for many other purposes. And in this show for today, we'd like you to meet a Korean couple. Having been living in Vietnam for nearly 20 years, they have continuously contributed to the fostering of the ties between the two nations. Three months after Vietnam and Korea normalized relations in December 1992, Sim Sang-jun arrived in Vietnam. Studying ethnology in the U.S. previously, the event was a chance for him to understand more about Vietnam. The more he studies, the more he loves Vietnam, the country with 4,000 year stretch of history and encourages people standing against foreign invasions. During my eight years of research, I see that Vietnam is a special nation that is different from any other countries in the world. This country has been through glorious chapters in history. Despite Chinese rule for 1,000 years, Vietnam remained aware of her independence. This is underlined by a poem by Li Thường Kiệt during the Li dynasty. The southern emperor rules the southern land. Our destiny is writ in heaven's book. How dare you, the bandits, shape us on our soil? You show me your undoing at our hands. Being able to visit Vietnam was for Dr. Sim like a dream that came true. And soon after the moment he set his foot here, he began dreaming of something else. I wanted to implement community development programs in Vietnam. As a Korean resident, I want to play my part in Korean-Vietnamese relations. I want to help warm the relationship between the two countries, making Vietnam and Korea grow and gain mutual benefits. Receiving a doctorate in ethnology in 2001, it took Sim another four years to prepare for official opening of the Korea Vietnam Culture Communication Center. However, Sim did not do this alone. The idea received great support from his wife, Kim Young Shin, who also came to Vietnam with him in the early days. Having already planned to go to Africa for voluntary work on humanitarian missions, Kim changed her mind and accompanied her husband, knowing that Sim wanted to go to Vietnam and soon she became involved in the establishment of the center. When I came to Vietnam, I was surprised to know that there are so many Koreans living in Vietnam. Koreans are conservative, so they are not open to Vietnamese culture. I don't think that's a positive, so with this center, I would like to introduce Vietnamese culture to them. The center is a bridge connecting the peoples of the two countries. Apart from training courses that help Vietnamese students improve their language skills, the center also cooperates with other agencies to organize exchange activities to commemorate the 20th anniversary of Korea-Vietnamese diplomatic ties, the 6th Korean Language Festival was held last year in Hanoi, attracting hundreds of Vietnamese and Korean students. The event offered young students a chance to practice their language skills and improve mutual understanding. We organize this program for both Vietnamese and Korean students. Their event, I think, is very meaningful for Korean students in Vietnam. I hope they gain a better understanding about Vietnam and feel closer to the country. During the festival, the Ring the Golden Bell program was held for both Vietnamese and Korean contestants. The competition saw the participants compete with each other in terms of Vietnamese language skills and knowledge of Vietnamese history and society. And most
most of the Korean students admitted that they have learned a lot about Vietnam through this activity. Nếu mà tôi về nước và tôi giải thích ở Việt Nam cho gia đình của mình. When I return home, I will tell every member of my family that it's great to be in Vietnam. I will tell my mom and dad that if they have time, they should travel to Vietnam. At first, you may feel strange when staying in Vietnam, but gradually, you will see that the Vietnamese are very kind. Joining in the festival this time, I learned a lot of things that I've never knew before. I think it's a great opportunity for Korean students to meet Vietnamese students. My father works in Vietnam, so I want to learn Vietnamese and come to Vietnam to experience life in the country. After learning Vietnamese, I found out that there are many similarities between Vietnam and Korea, not only in language, but also in culture. The event that we are attending today is a chance for Korean and Vietnamese students to get to know each other better and develop relations between the two countries. Through the language we learn, we can introduce our history and culture to foreign friends that also aids mutual understanding. So with events like this, students act as bridges connecting countries together. There are 13 universities with Korean language faculties in Vietnam and hundreds of Koreans come to Vietnam every year to study. The success of the 6th Korean Language Festival is proof of the solidarity between the younger generations of the two nations. Not only helping Vietnamese students acquire the skills of language for their future career, Dr. Sim and his wife also contribute to transnational marriages. With a lot of training courses and exchanges already organized, they hope to do a part in ensuring happiness for Korean Vietnamese families. When visiting Vietnam for the first time, Kim never thought that there were so many multicultural families. Since 2000, the number of mixed family has rapidly increased. A big problem in these families, in Kim's opinion, is the language barrier between husband and wife, which is likely to lead to breakups. That's why Kim opened a training course providing participants with experiences about life, culture and marriage in Korea before moving there. Their experience in Korean culture, the 15-day, 4-hour-a-day training course equipped participants with Korean language skills. Apart from that, we taught them Korean culture, history and cooking. Thanks to that, they can better adapt themselves to a new life. If they have any problem, they can call us for further consultation. Some families I know were on the verge of breaking up, but after listening to our consultation, they now have a happy life. That's the biggest objective for opening a center like ours. Most of the participants in the training course will soon leave for Korea with their husbands. They all hope for a happy life abroad with the support from their instructor. The support of the instructors at the center and especially Mrs. Kim, who has been living in Vietnam for a long time and can speak Vietnamese very well, allow us to understand more about Korean tradition and culture. The course is very helpful to us because I think when I arrived in Korea, I would not be as confused by the new lifestyle and family. The Museum of Ethnology today is receiving a group of special visitors. These are members of Korean Vietnamese multicultural families in Korea. Taking part in this trip, facilitated by Korea Vietnam Cultural Communication Center, the offspring of these families can understand more about Vietnam, its culture, and multi ethnicity. For many of the youngsters here, 
The trip gives them a chance to explore the root of their family. Kim Yun Rae, a volunteer from the Korea Vietnam Cultural Communication Center, is in charge of guiding the children around the place. I want to teach them that how Vietnam is a great place for their like it's not a shy thing. It's very a uh, proud, proudful thing that their mom country is very strong and developed. They could be more satisfied and proud of themselves. <laughs> After the visit to the museum, the families gather to cook. Here, the wives in such families will cook traditional Vietnamese food, including bún chả and spring rolls. They hope that cooking will partly help prevent Vietnamese traditional cultural features from fading away in their children's mind. <coughs> I feel like I'm sharing my knowledge with my children, letting them know about Vietnamese culture. For example, during holidays or family gathering, Vietnamese people often make traditional dishes such as spring rolls. Or when you gather with friends, you make bún chả. I want them to know that these dishes come from my country. The governments and the Korea Vietnam Cultural Communication Center have developed plans to make traveling and exchanges easier for multicultural families. This makes it easier for us to experience both parts of our family's cultural heritage. I think this activity is so meaningful. Living away from home, the connection between children and multicultural families to one half of their culture is weak. So events like this are what they need in the future. Everything here is different from Korea. The way people eat, travel, and the architecture are really strange to me. Coming to Vietnam, I can learn Vietnamese and meet with my grandparents. I'm really happy. After this trip, all these families will return to their home and career. But in the mind of the younger generations, the memory of one of their parents' home countries will still remain. Traveling back and forth between Vietnam and Korea while running many projects, Dr. Seem and his wife rarely have time to relax. But when they have some time, walking down the street near their home, visiting a cafe, and looking back on the day they came to Vietnam is a common theme. Twenty years has passed, but for Dr. Seem, his decision to stay in Vietnam and foster Vietnamese-Korean relations has never changed. I want to contribute to the development of the two countries, especially in the field of culture. Vietnam and Korea are connected by an inseparable bond. I believe that Vietnam will become an important counterpart, an important friend of Korea in the future. From the bottom of my heart, I wish to continue my contribution to the development of Vietnam and Korea. While Sim and Kim have decided to continue staying in Vietnam, they also believe that their children will one day return and do their part in some way. My two sons are studying law and want to be lawyers in the U.S. My first son says he wants to return to Vietnam and lecture at the law university. My second son is very good at Vietnamese and he misses Vietnam. I'm not sure if they want to carry on what we do now, but I'm sure they will return to Vietnam.
It's not uncommon for people, especially Westerners, to associate martial art with East Asian countries like Japan, Korea, and China, when in fact, Vietnam also has a rich tradition of martial art of its own. In today's Vietnam at a glance, let's take a look at a school of martial arts, which is unique to the country, namely Võ Sao, or Iron Fluid Martial Art. While music and martial arts may seem like two unrelated domains, for Master Chik Nhu Quân, the iron flute is an indispensable element of his daily practice. The 60-year-old martial artist is now the only living grandmaster of Võ Sao, or iron flute martial art in Vietnam. Võ Sao has its roots in Yên Thế, the northernmost district of Bắc Giang province. From the end of the 19th century to the beginning of the 20th century, the legendary Yên Thế uprising took place in this area. The insurgents was led by peasant hero Hoàng Hoa Tham, who invented Võ Sao as a form of defense against the French colonial army. Quân's mentor was late Grandmaster Chiu Quốc Uy. At the end of the 1980s, Uy was the last remaining master of the Võ Sao, which was believed to have disappeared shortly after the failure of the Yên Thế uprising in 1913. Uy was the only master of the art and Quân was his only student. These days, however, the martial art has slowly been revived. Every year, Quân and his disciples travel to the late Grandmaster's home and offer him their respect. <laughs> to practice Võ Sao, one needs to display qualities of both a martial artist and a musician. The movements of this art require agility and immense strength, as the iron flute may weigh up to 5 kilos. Also, Learners must be proficient in music so that they can perform each move in harmony with the flute melodies. Tôi thì được tiếp xúc với rất nhiều loại binh khí như là côn đao kiếm hoặc như là trường của đoàn của đoàn côn thì mới tiếp xúc thì tôi coi những cái sáo này thì cũng là binh khí bình thường nhưng khi tiếp xúc lâu hơn và sâu hơn rồi và được truyền cảm bởi âm nhạc trong từ cái sáo ra thì thời nay thì tôi lại coi nó rất là đặc biệt. According to Kun, the iron flute used during the Yên Thế uprising was about 70 centimeters in length and 400 grams in weight. It could be used to strike, stab, and ward off blows. Master Chik Nhu Quân has produced several types of iron flutes that are greater in both sides and weight. For example, the Rong Zun, a worm dragon flute, is over 2 meters long and weighs 5 kilos. What's also remarkable, it can produce standard flute sounds fitted for a modern orchestra. We are in the first weeks of spring. By the streams and mountains of Bắc Giang province, both masters and students are busy practicing Võ Sao. Spring brings along new inspiration for the artists. They are looking forward to another great year for the Võ Sao School of Martial Arts. qua những cái uh, tiếng sáo, những uh, tiếng hát và những bài võ chúng chúng tôi thì về mùa xuân là chúng tôi muốn ca ngợi tình yêu cuộc sống của con người, muốn chúc đến mọi người một năm mới an khang thịnh vượng, hạnh phúc và mọi sự mong như mong muốn. Going to pagodas in the new year and wish for happiness and love is one of the many traditions of the Vietnamese. And in our time out this week, our host Thanh Vân is waiting for us at the oldest pagoda in Hanoi and she'll tell you more about this beautiful tradition. 
Hello everyone, I'm so glad to see you again in today's episode of Time Out. In the early days of the year of the snake, people are eager to go to pagodas and pray for a lucky year ahead. And today I'm standing at one of the most celebrated pagodas in Hanoi, Chen Quoc Pagoda. Let's go with me and find out more about the beauty side of Vietnamese culture at the start of New Year. The Chen Quoc Pagoda in Hanoi is the oldest pagoda in the city, originally constructed in the 6th century during the reign of Imperial Li Nam De, thus giving it an age of 1,400 years. À, chùa Trấn Quốc mình thì là đa số là thường thường là dân người ta mình đến đây là hay làm lễ cầu an, cầu cho mình có một năm mới được uh, uh, luôn luôn được gia đình được mạnh khỏe và hạnh phúc. Đấy thì là chị là chị bán hàng ở đây. Đó, thì chị cũng hôm nay chị cũng bán cho em một chút gọi là hai hộp hương vòng để em đi vào trong cửa Phật em dâng. Thứ nhất là cầu cho gia đình em được luôn luôn mạnh khỏe và cầu cho em được cái sức khỏe đấy, cả một năm mình làm ăn tươi tốt, mạnh khỏe. Người đa số là các nước Đấy thì là người ta đến đây người ta cũng thứ nhất người ta ta ham hiểu về cái 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 phong tục của người Việt Nam mình. Đấy là thường thường là người ta hay đi lên lễ người ta xem cái phong tục của mình xem là một năm thì mình đi như thế nào đó. Thế cái phong tục của mình đấy thì là người người dân Việt Nam mình thì là người châu Á thì mình cũng hay có phong tục của ta mình đến đền đến chùa mình cầu an. When founded, the temple was named National Founding and was located on the shores of the Red River. When confronted with the river's encroachment, the temple was relocated in West Lake, where it is now. A small causeway links it to the mainland. phong tục cổ truyền của người Việt Nam nói chung và các nước Đông Nam Á nói riêng thì đầu năm thường hay cả gia đình hoặc là một cá nhân muốn đi cái chùa để cầu một cái điều gì đó may mắn thì là cho cầu cho quốc thái dân an, cho mưa hòa gió thuận, cho công an Việt Nam được phát triển đều để làm sao cho đất nước ta ngày một giàu mạnh, dân ta ngày càng phát triển nhiều hơn nữa. The Chen Quoc Pagoda is very famous because of its long history and is not only attracted Vietnamese people but also a lot of foreigners to come to visit. It's a, a very propitious uh, time of the year for, for people to, to ask for uh, new things uh, and uh, it's, it's a celebration, a big celebration and uh, the fact that uh, um, the Vietnamese people uh, managed to keep this kind of tradition alive. I think it's a very good thing, you know, uh, because it's part of the part of your your culture. It's part of of, of the, the the legacy that that you you have received from from your your ancestors, and it's it's quite a, quite a good thing. We are feeling a good feeling here. <laughs> okay. It's very different that uh, we have uh, in France, and uh, that's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want for New Year? Peace for everyone. Peaceful for everyone. Yes. It's so nice to have a place in the city that's more peaceful and I guess you can just feel um, it's a very calm place to visit and uh, a nice break from the city. Um, I've been to other pagodas in, in Japan and we've seen some other ones around Vietnam, but this one is, is probably the most uh, calm that we've been to so far in Vietnam. People get a very peaceful feeling when they get into the pagoda, and so do I. Let's wish for a very healthy and lucky new year ahead. It's time to say goodbye for now, and we hope that you enjoyed our show today and know more about Vietnamese beautiful culture for the very beginning of the new year. Goodbye from VTV4 and see you again soon. And that's it. Our host Tang Vân with her Tamao has wrapped up our expert corner for this week. Hope you like it.
but don't forget to send us your comments or ideas to icepodcorner at vtv.vn. Thank you and see you next time.